Hello everybody, and today uh, this is going to be a tutorial on how to make polycarb parts for your robot in Onshape. There haven't been a lot of tutorials on, out there for this, and mainly to learn you've had to like go to other tutorials and transfer your skill. So I feel like this will be really helpful for anyone trying to learn how to CAD. If you have a laser cutter or a CNC machine, or just for your notebook, uh, to CAD your polycarbonate. So, to start off, let's say you want to connect these to C channel. Right now they would be a lot, a little difficult to connect because of their orientation. So, if you want to connect them and you have the tools to do so, you may want to make a polycarb part. So, to start off uh, with these, you want to figure out the hole you need. You will click measure details so now it will show your measurements and you will click here and here and it says parallel distance which is 0.182 this is the distance across the hole and that is what you will use for the holes in your polycarb you may be wondering where do we make the polycarb so to start off we'll click create new part studio and you'll have something that looks like this. With this, uh, because polycarbonate is flat, you want to hide the front and right. To do this, you will hover over the front or right planes here, and you will click the Hide button. You can also do this by right-clicking and clicking where this says Show. You can also click Hide. Now to begin, what we want to do is we want to make a sketch. The way on shape designs work is you'll make a sketch and extrude off of that sketch what you want to have. So you'll click sketch shift S and then click on the plane you want to edit on. For this I will be editing on the top plane. Once you click it you should have something that looks like sketch one appear. For our design we want to have it be connected at this hole, this hole, and this hole, or something along those lines. So we have a good triangle which will support our C channel well. So we will go into the part studio, and to begin, we want to create a center point rectangle. If yours does not say center point rectangle, we will click the down arrow, and you can click on center point rectangle here. You can also just hit R. Now I will drag out a rectangle in the size I want. With this rectangle, I, you may notice how the outside is blue. That means it has not had its distance defined yet. To define the distance, you will hit the D key. And you can now click on an edge and a number should out appear like this. With this number, you can set it here, and you can set this right here. Now, I can change this to, for example, 2 if I want to change the size of my rectangle. You can also define the distance to the center of a uh, point. This can help you prevent moving your sketch around and harm your alignment. So now that we have our rectangle, we want to figure out how big it needs to be. Right now, our rectangle, uh, we'll use the show measure details tool and we'll find the size we need it to be. Another quick tool if you're trying to CAD quickly is every hole distance in VEX is about half an inch. So here to here, from this end to here is about one inch. So I will go and make mine. We want, let's say, from this line right here to this face right here, that distance is 1.980. So we, for simplicity, can just make it two. Next up, if we want to show measure details, you will just left click and it will go away. You can click here to select this face for what we want to measure. And then we can click 
here for the other face. Now we can view the distance. Parallel distance, whenever you hover over something, it'll show what distance. Right now, our parallel distance is 1.909 inches. So we can have a 2 by 2 square, which should accomplish what we want. So I can select this as 2. And then I can also define these on the inside to maybe move it around if I wanted to. Now we want to make the holes that we're actually going to screw into. So now I, we can make a center point circle. If you, and again, if you don't have center point circle, you can click this down arrow and you can click that. Now I will just draw one, let's say, right here. And then one right here and one right here. Now, for me to define the distance, you'll click one outside diameter and you can put this here. And from earlier, we had 0 0.182 as our screw hole diameter. Now I can just do this on the other, 182, and then 0 0.182. You may notice that these are still blue though. So we need to define their distance to locations. So now that I'm still in the distance tool, I can move my mouse around and define this. For example, if I wanted the distance from this to be maybe 0 0.8 or 0 0.9, I can define that. For now, we can go 0 0.85. And if I want to define the lateral distance from here to here, I will hit the D key, distance, and move this down to here. So let's say, for example, 0 0.7. Now notice how this circle is completely black. I will now make my way over and define this circle's distance from here. Right now it's at 1.444. You can also hit Escape and Control Z if you mess up and want to align something somewhere else. So now if I click the edge of here and the edge of here, I can click this here and we'll have that distance. And now if I want to get the vertical distance to zero, now that's zero and we can have our lateral distance, which is currently 1.627. I do not want it to be that length. I can go back over here. And if I'm trying to go from this hole to maybe let's say this hole, I can remember you can always click your measure tool, click here, click here, and distance is 1.182 inches. So I will edit this 1.182 inches. And let's say if I want it to be further, I can remember just measure again, click here, click here, 1.682. So now we have one hole here, one hole here. Now for this hole, this one is still blue, meaning it still needs to be defined. Now I can click to define the center distance from each other, like the vertical distance. I will start off with this to here to here, and we can make it vertical. And we want to be 0 0.7 because then it will be parallel. So 0 0.7. Now these should be in line with each other. Now lastly, to define the distance between here and here, we will click this end, the furthest away end, and we will click this end. Now we have this distance. And now to find the distance we want under assembly 1, we will click measure here to here, 1.682 again. So now we hit escape, 1.682. And now we should have a basic design for our polycarbonate. Now, let's say if you don't want to make it look fancy or anything, I can click this check mark right here, click extrude, which is shift E and I will click this face. You want to click the face that does not have the circles included. You may be thinking this is incredibly tall. 
the X plastic can only be 0, 0, 7 inches tall. So we can change the depth to 0, 0, 0, 0.007. Now we have this. And to insert it, I will go into assembly 1. Insert part 1. Now, lastly, to add it onto your C channel, I will hit shift and use the mate function by clicking M, flip it, and I will rotate it to the position it needs to be in. Now, with this, I can add in my screws and I can add in whatever else I want. So, for basic simple applications, this will suit you for, let's say, connecting two C channels together. Now, if I wanted to make this look nicer, or, you know, right now we have sharp corners right here, there are multiple tools you can use. To start off, I can go back and edit this sketch, and if I wanted it to have a curve from here to here. So, I can click and make a spline. A spline is a line with points you can curve. So if I click spline, click here, click here, and click here, and then hit escape, we should have a simple line. Now, with this, I hit D, and then we can define here just to get a hole sometime. Sometimes it does bug, and you just want to do that. But now, you will hit Define to define the distance. And that see how that dot is now black? We want to get all of this black. So we'll hit D again, and find the second point, and edit that here. Hit D again, second point. Put that there. D again, point here. D again, point here. Now we can move it around. Let's say if I want this to be a little higher, I could change it to 0 0.5. And I could change this to 0 0.4. So now it's in a position I prefer. Lastly, for this one, we can just define its distance. Let's say if I want it, this changes the rotation to 1. And I want to define this end. These are what you use to rotate the ends. I can change that back to 1 inch. Now we have a nicer looking curve that once we finish defining should become black, meaning that it is fully a fixed position. Now, whenever we extrude, this point will not, uh, this side will not, you know, extrude outward. We'll have only this area because of this face we clicked. Also, if you don't feel like defining, for inside decorations, you may not need to, but if you ever are trying to do something more complicated or smoother, you can always do that. So for example, if I wanted to make a line and put a triangle inside it, because triangles are cool, I would go line, 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 and then connect. And now I should have a triangle inside my polycarb. So now if I click check mark, we now have a designed uh, thing. But we still have these sharp edges right here. So that's when our last tool we will use today called the fillet comes in. A fillet is used to round corners. So I can hit Shift F or click on the fillet tool and I will start off by clicking here. You may notice that it rounds it out by making a circle, but right now it's rounded out. I can change the radius right here, so instead of 1 inch, I can make it 0 0.1 inch. And now that corner is a lot smoother. And now we can just do it to the other sides. By You can also click the fillet tool, go right here, 0.1, check mark, and right here, check mark. So now we have our much nicer polycarbonate part. Going back into assembly one, we can insert it, part one, and now we can 
click mate by hitting the M key, click on the inside. You can always use shift to help you get to the inside of circles, put it here and rotate it. And now we have our polycarbonate part. Thank you for uh, watching to the end of this video. Also, only a, a very small percentage of my viewers are actually subscribed. So a subscription would be incredibly helpful if you want any more videos like this or any videos along related to VEX Robotics or maybe other engineering projects. Thank you.